The success of Tesla in the plug-in vehicle marketplace has seen a second wave of interest in electric vehicle startups. The first, in case you were interested, was somewhere between 2005 through to about 2011. But as I've said plenty of times before, the number of companies that enter into the electric car or rather electric vehicle marketplace with bold ideas of changing the world and becoming a profitable business only to crash and burn and become a footnote in the history books is pretty large. And in fact, to date, the only electric automaker and the only car company in the US since Chrysler to successfully go from startup to volume automaker turning a decent profit is Tesla. Most wannabe car companies fail long before they have a production vehicle. Most will come up with some form of prototype, but then they run out of funds or face so many delays that their vehicle is no longer competitive in the marketplace or are so incredibly overpriced for what they offer that nobody wants to buy one. A good example of this is Coda, a company that did actually get to producing a limited number of electric cars in the form of the Coda sedan. But it was not a ground up vehicle as Tesla now produces. Instead, it was an all electric version of an existing gasoline car sold in China, the Hayabo Saibo. And when it finally entered into the marketplace, it was competing against cars like the Nissan Leaf, which offered far more functionality for far less money. There were others too, the original Fisker Karma, the Think City and Phoenix Motor Company, a pickup truck that got functional prototypes but never really went beyond that. This year, we've been following some other companies we feel have a similar fate, including, of course, Nikola Motor. Byton has all but vanished off the face of the earth, and frankly, Faraday Future isn't doing much better. But there is one company that we've had hope in, and that's Lucid Motor. Granted, we have spent time with Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson, having interviewed him here on this channel earlier this year, and also at the company's San Francisco Bay headquarters. Our conversations have been technical, in-depth, and based on what I saw earlier this year when I toured behind the scenes, sorry, they wouldn't let me film, the company isn't writing blank checks of promises it hasn't even begun to try and cash. Whereas many startups do that, regularly. Yesterday, Lucid confirmed what I'd suspected through various conversations I'd had with people over the last few weeks, namely that its production facility in Casa Grande, Arizona, has completed its first phase of construction. Nicknamed the Lucid Advanced Manufacturing Plant, or AMP-1 if you like acronyms, construction began on the facility a year ago today with a ceremonial groundbreaking. Admittedly, Lucid's production plans have been held back a bit by COVID-19. Originally, I seem to recall it planned deliveries of the Lucid Air by the end of this year. But based on the revised schedule Lucid came up with earlier this year, which accounted for the various lockdowns that had slowed down on-site construction, Lucid is on track for its promised spring 2021 start of production for the Lucid Air. And that's a pretty big thing. In fact, it's a really big deal. I'm going to tell you why. First up, Lucid has managed to successfully get through all of the physical construction of its plant without running out of money, something that has caught out many a wannabe automaker in the past. And while it does still have to finish commissioning the production lines, which is essentially the term given to making a production line ready for vehicles to be assembled on it, it also earns the distinction of being the first new electric automaker to build its own dedicated greenfield production facility and finish it in the US. A second, according to Lucid, it has already used some of the production lines at AMP1 to build its most recent beta prototype test fleet of Lucid Airs. It's also currently series producing what it calls production representative or production intent Lucid Airs on that same production line. And it's readying itself for a switch to series production vehicles in a few months. This puts Lucid in the same kind of place as Tesla was in early 2012, when it was building fleets of Model S production intent vehicles ahead of the car's official start of deliveries in July 2012. Third, it appears Lucid has followed Tesla's modular construction approach in building AMP1, an approach which was instrumental in helping Tesla quickly build its Gigafactory north of Reno, Nevada, 
and allows construction of expanded production lines to take place while other parts of the facility are already in full-scale production. And this, by the way, is true for other Tesla Gigafactories. From a financial standpoint, this is very important, as it allows Lucid to iron out early production issues and kinks and modify production layouts as required before the full facility is operating. But more importantly, it gives Lucid another revenue stream earlier than it would if it waited for an entire facility to be finished. Fourth, because it's using a modular construction method and a greenfield site as Tesla did for the Gigafactory in Nirvana, as well as all of its other Tesla Gigafactories around the world, it should be a whole lot easier for the factory to operate in an as efficient way as possible, both from an energy standpoint, but also from a daily operational standpoint. Lucid has said in the past that the location in Casa Grande was picked for a number of different reasons, including geographical, infrastructure, pre-existing automotive supply chain, and climate. And I'm guessing that financial incentives from the state of Arizona played a part, and come to think of it, also the fact that it's probably going to be easier to power the facility from renewables in Arizona than it would be in other parts of the US. I should also acknowledge all of the challenges that lay ahead. Lucid, unlike many automotive startups, doesn't have immediate cash flow concerns thanks to its massive investment from the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. I suspect, too, that the very engineering first approach that I've always seen Peter Rawlinson exhibit has helped keep things lean, not to mention income that Lucid has enjoyed as a result of its battery arm, Ativa, developing and building battery packs for Formula E for the last few years. This is in contrast to, say, Byton or Faraday Future, which to all intents and purposes felt like they were more eager to focus on in-car tech than anything else. And they still really haven't built anything other than a prototype or two. But none of those advantages mean that Lucid will actually reach production. Things can and will go wrong between now and any eventual production or deliveries starting. Things can and most likely will go wrong even if Lucid gets to a point where it's having deliveries. Look, you only have to look at Tesla's first few years of Model S production to see some of the issues that lie in wait for Lucid. But in Lucid's case, it gets to benefit from Tesla being there first. Peter was, after all, an important figure in the first few years of Model S production. I'm guessing that some of what he learned at Tesla, not to mention years at Jaguar Land Rover and Lotus, will also help him prepare his team for Lucid Air production. And like Tesla before it, Lucid will start with its highest value cars first, before trickling its model selection down to eventually produce more affordable models. And therein lies its biggest challenge, Tesla. Elon Musk and Tesla are streets ahead of anyone else in terms of sales and production. And both Tesla and Lucid are locked in a little war to see whose car can go the furthest per charge, to see whose is most efficient. Where Tesla wins categorically, though, is its price. Its vehicles are far more affordable than Lucid's high-end range-topping halo car, the Lucid Air Dream Edition. But then again, having sat in a Lucid Air... It's also fair to say that the Lucid Air is a very different car to the Model S. It's not competing against Tesla, it's competing against the Maybachs and the high-end luxury executive sedans that are owned by people for whom a few hundred thousand dollars is weekend spending money. Right now, it's a 1% or maybe a 2%ers car, and it feels like that. And if you'll permit me, Unlike the startups which have failed in the past, startups which offered unimpressive cars with impossibly high sticker prices, the Lucid Air is the first car since a Tesla Model S to offer an electric car that feels like it's worth that sticker price. If those high sticker prices can bankroll Lucid's development of more affordable models in the future, well, colour me excited. Let's hope Lucid gets through the next few months though on the way because nothing in the automotive startup world is a surefire thing. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons, that's John Lyons, Ray Jean Fellows, Jeffrey Songster and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. That's Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin and Ian. 
You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters by becoming one yourself. You can do that by following the links below or using one of the links to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. You'll also find a link to our free Discord server, so sign up and come and join in the fun. And if you're in need of some swag, don't forget to check out our merch over at redbubble.com. After the names have finished scrolling, you'll see a new suggestion for a new video to watch, so please do consider watching it if you haven't, and I'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!